Okay, and uh, welcome back to Phil Salvage Rebuilds. Um, so today's video will be slightly different uh, because quite a few of you have asked through the videos for me to actually show the the bidding process and you know looking at the cars on Copart and things like that. So I thought I'd do a little video today. Um, we'll watch a few cars go through auction. Perhaps we'll bid on something. I'm not too sure yet. I haven't really seen too much that takes my fancy, but. We will have a look. Um, so we're going to go into Copart, and this is my um, dashboard. So these are the cars that I've got in my watch list. Um, so we're not really going to be interested in the bottom three at the minute. It's just the top two that go through today. And all I've really found of interest is um, there's a 2009 Golf GTI, currently at 1500, and there's also a 14 plate Fiesta ST at 2000. I'm only really contemplating the Fiesta because I've got a bumper that we could possibly use. So the way the system works is these cars um, get put up into a list. So if we go on to say, the auctions calendar, you get a list of auctions. I generally use the um, Chester site. So you click on Chester, um, view this location. Oh, this doesn't work properly, does it? It's because it's a live auction now. So if I just go to Friday, for instance, we'll click on Chester for Friday. And this brings you a list of every single car going through auction at Chester on Friday. Um, so you work your way through the list. Do you know, if you see something that takes your fancy, um, just for instance, this, this golf area, click on the lot number, and then you get this page up, which gives you all the details that you need to know. So the car, cars are category N, 41,000 miles, it gives you the registration plate, bit of highlights, you know, these are keys for looking at if, if the car runs and things like that. So you've got a featured vehicle, engine start program, additional info. It's listing the primary damage as minor dents and scratches, secondary damage as normal wear, and then you've got your estimated value. Uh, and then you look through the pictures, join detail and, and see if you're interested. So. If we go back to my list, I have on here a 2009 Golf GTI. Um, like I said, I'm not convinced I'm interested in this car, but we will watch it go through auction and we'll see what it goes for. And if it stays cheap, I don't know, maybe. So the car is an unrecorded vehicle, so there's no, no categorization on this car. It has done 108,000 miles, which is a little high. It's a 59 plate um, enhanced vehicle, additional info. We'll get to that. Primary damage side, secondary damage, minor dents and scratches, and they're estimating the retail of this car to be £10,495, which it is nowhere near. Um, so take them numbers with a pinch of salt. So we carry on down the list, it tells you it's got five doors, it's grey, two litre, six speed, auto box. It has keys, there isn't any VAT to be added, and this car does have the V5 um, file with it. So if you click on to additional information, this tells you, sometimes this isn't on every car, you know, but what it says is engine turns but will not start, with bonnet not closing fully. The recorded mileage on the um, General MLT history checker is consistent. There's no discrepancies with the uh, HPI check. HPI states nine former keepers, so that's a lot of keepers. V5 is present and it shows cat clear 10th of March 2020, which is seven days ago. So we'll have a look at the pictures. Um, if you hover your mouse over the picture, you do get you know, a zoomed in version. And if you click on HD, you then get an even closer picture with a lot more detail. So you can look for scratches and things like that. Uh, you know, body lines, try and figure out the history of the car yourself. Um, so I, like I say, I have looked at this car. It does look like the, top, the back of the bonnet is slightly out of line. Um, you know, right in the middle there. Uh, but I'll just fly through them quickly. Damage-wise, it doesn't look like there is any. You've got some mould on the seats, so the car has been sat around for a little bit. And then the gear stick there. But other than that, the interior does look does look quite clean. Um, it shows the clock so you can verify that you have got the miles that they say, 108,000, and 
it doesn't show it running. Now obviously definitely make sure you look at these pictures because they won't always tell you that the car doesn't run. You won't always get this additional information saying engine turns but will not start. You have to look at the pictures yourself and if that rev count is at the bottom then you've got to presume that the car isn't running. So look at the engine bay. I don't think that intake box is standard. Um, I very much doubt they came with a carbon intake as standard, so perhaps it's been a bit of a boy race the car, I don't know. Um, and they've, they've put this picture on because I'm presuming that scratch, just to show you that scratch. And then that's the back again, plenty more mould. So this car, basically it's here because the engine doesn't run in my eyes. Um, so you've got to really bear in mind that if you do buy this car, you've got to factor in that you're going to be putting an engine into it, which I have done. I've had a, I've had a look and um, you're not going to find this engine for much cheaper than £1,500 for a decent one. So you've got to factor that into the, to the bid. And at the moment, the bid is at fifteen fifty. So we'll watch it. Um, car's probably worth about five or 6000 I would have thought. Finished. So... If it doesn't go anywhere, perhaps there is a little bit of profit to be made there. Uh, so we'll watch it. So we'll move on to the next one. And it's this Fiesta ST. Now I know we've just had a Fiesta ST in, uh, but for some reason I like to do cars in pairs. Um, and like I said, we have got the other bumper that we have, uh, that we need to finish the repair on. So we'll have a quick look over it. Straight off. You can see if we go onto HD, the bumper's got a load of black tape on it. So it has had a bump on the front there, and it is listed as category N, so no structural damage that they have seen. Don't take it for definite, but look at the picture, you're pretty sure there isn't going to be any structural damage there. So, bumper, you, know, you never know, I'll probably take all that tape off, it's probably um, repairable anyway. Um, but there's a bit of a crease in the bonnet. Um, the wing definitely looks out of a line with the door. There's a nice big gap there. Um, and that's about as much as you can see on this picture. So we'll try this one again. HD. Sorry, now it's missing, but that's probably because it's been told from wherever it's crashed. It's dirty, that's for sure. Around the back, again, it's a very hard colour to, to try to see scratches on because the car's so dirty as well and, and it's a dark colour. Um, interior, so a good thing to look out for on the interiors is a key. So you see a key there, generally the ranging from the mirror, the mirror, the interior mirror, but this is missing the mirror. Um, so it's listed as a Fiesta ST. So if you look in the middle, just in front of the gear stick, you've got two um, heated seat buttons. So that tells us it's definitely at least an ST2. And the climate control button in the middle has not got um, a digital screen on it. So that's, that means it's definitely an ST2. And it's got the Sony system as well. So yeah. ST2. Look at the engine. It's obviously raining when they um, took the picture. Back seats. It's, it's dirty. It's got 82,000 miles on it, so a fair bit more mileage than mine. Well, the one I've just sold. Um, another picture of the front corner. See, so you got a factor in there. Front bumper. Presume a headlight. Because it's quite often they'll they'll easily snap the tabs, probably fixable, but a bonnet, possibly a wing, and perhaps even a um, you know a front panel. There's no no signs that the coolant has dropped, so you'd probably kind of hope that the radiator is fine. And then you get to this picture, and it shows some more damage on the rear arch, which is um. Very unfortunate because without that damage, you're looking at a very easy fix. So this this will require um, 
some body work, obviously a body shop to do this. You might find that when you've picked up the car, a lot of these marks will buff out, but I'm I'm pretty sure you can see that there's a there's a substantial dent there. And even if you were uh, trying to get the dent pulled out, pretty sure there's gonna be some body work needed there. So factor that in. So 82,000 run and drive, additional info. Estimate 6650. If it's a clean title, 14 plate, it would be worth that, yeah, definitely. But this is a cayenne. Um, so let's move down a bit. Comes with the V5, which is quite rare. I look at the additional information. Now, this is a good thing to look at because it's saying number of keys with vehicle has none. So basically what has happened here, this vehicle has turned up at Core Park with no keys. They've done their initial assessment on the vehicle and, and, and realised there's no keys and that's why it says that in the additional information. Now we know by looking at the picture, if we close this, look at the picture, we can see the key there and the fact that it's running. They've obviously had the key sent in at a later date and haven't updated the additional information. So that's a good thing to look out for because if someone was to come on this page and they just went straight to additional information and saw, and saw the no keys, it might put them off. So you potentially, you know, are bidding against less people there. So that's a good thing. So um, no discrepancies on the number plate. History is okay on the mileage. Um, only one former keeper and the car is on a finance plan at the minute, but they're saying that within 48 hours of the payment, um, of you buying the car, the car will be uh, paid off and HPI updated. Okay, so they're the two cars we're going to focus on. So you can come on these at any time and you can put in a bid of however high you want to bid. And then you don't need to watch the auction. You can just let the auction run and see if you win the vehicle. The other option you got is, this is Chester, so on Tuesday, which is today i'm recording this on tuesday obviously at 12 o'clock it's now 10 past 12 so at 12 o'clock the auction starts so you'll go bid now that will load up the lane of the auction um that the car is at so like i said i'm actually lying this is rochford um so, so anyway so this car is is for sale at, at rochford it's on lane b and it's telling that at the minute there's 750 people watching this auction. So 12 o'clock, you load up this page. Your car will be highlighted in yellow in the list of cars. And it will tell you roughly how long until your car goes through the auction. So it's telling me there that this car will roughly go through the auction in 157 minutes. That's because there's 156 cars before this. And they, or is it half of that? I can't remember now if they either allow for a minute or 30 seconds per car on average and work it out as that. So, well, it's just gone down one minute. So it's a minute per car they're allowing. So if cars go through a lot quicker, that will come down a lot quicker. So you do need to keep checking in and having a look. So it, this is exactly what is going to happen. So when my car gets to the top of the list, it'll come to the top like this. Um, so at the minute we've got a, a Volkswagen Jetta going through. We've got a circle Curious. running round. You press bid. Every time you bid, the circle starts again from the top. Once it gets to the end, sometimes there'll be a bonus time where it'll go around again. Sometimes there won't, and that'll be the car sold. So we'll watch this go through quickly. It's a pure sale, so there's no reserve on this car. Whatever that number is, is what it will sell for plus core part fee. This is a hot I'm obviously not going to bid on it because I don't want the car. But we'll watch it. So 62 plate, 147,000 miles, cat end repairable. The damage is literally just there. Front wing, door, done. Estimated retail, 3,800. Um, so, do you know, if I was looking at this car, even at 2,400, I would not be interested. It's too much as it is. Pure sale. So we'll watch it a bit longer. Bonus time. So yeah, it's gone to bonus time. That's because a lot of people seem to be interested. There's been a lot of bids. So it gives it an extra bonus time. 
Let's just see it go green now. Oh, it'll be, well, it won't be green, it'll be, if I fired one, it'll be green. So there you go, 2400. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to wait to watch that. But what we also need to bear in mind is we've also got the golf. So we need to go back to dashboard. Golf. Bid now. This one is at Chester. Lane C. And this car goes through in roughly 23 minutes. So I will come back in 23 minutes just before this one starts and we will watch it go through and perhaps we'll have a bid. Okay so our car is up next. Um, what we had, two, yeah 2009 Golf GTI, what we expect to need an engine. Uh, current bid 1550 and it's still on reserve so if it sells for 1550 there's no guarantee it will be let go. Um, so as soon as this Chevrolet has gone through, we will be up next, um, and then we can perhaps have a little cheeky bit on it. Like I said, I reckon it's worth about five and a half grand oh, um, depending on what else we find out when it turns up. But at 50 we probably break it anyway and uh, not lose any money on it, so what's that? Alright, here we go. New bidder. It's all good in. So we're so we're green at the minute, 1650. Someone's us from the Netherlands. Uh, another one, 1800. That's a quick rebid, one, isn't it? It's still the reserve, 1850. Now I think at two grand, we're done. So one more. Like there's a few people interested in this, isn't there? 2150. New bidder. See, I hate regret, I hate thinking, what if one more bid would have won it? <laughs> this is a hot lot. We got 2 3 now, it's still on reserve. Uh, let's see. Oh. <laughs> this is the game. So uh, there's, there's two other people bidding on this. So I think I'm probably going to let it go. That's two and a half grand. He probably got another four hundred pound in fees. Look at that three grand. It possibly was an engine. So we're going to let it go. On the so two four fifty it went for. New bidder. You never know, you see, if that engine turns out to be okay, they might have got themselves a bargain. So that's the end of the golf, unfortunately. So we'll um, we'll have to look at the Fiesta ST then, won't we? Let's have a quick check on the time. 134 minutes. So I will see you in a while. Alright, just uh, whilst we're waiting for the Fiesta ST, which is down to 125 minutes, I thought I would just give you a quick comparison between Cinetech and Copart. So we've got Copart on the right, we've got Cinetech on the left. These are both auction car sites. Copart, predominantly salvage. Cinetech does a mixture of both. Um, you have clean title, a lot of clean title stuff and some salvage as well. Two very different systems. Um, both of which you get about a week to look over the vehicle before it goes to auction. But unlike Copart, which all you get is a day, and then you have to log in at 12 and find out what time, you know, roughly it's going through, like we've look, looked at the 125 minutes uh, from now. With Cinetech, the minute it goes up, in like seven days notice, they give you an exact day and an exact time that the vehicle will go through auction. So as you can see today at 12.39 and 30 seconds this car will sell. Um, the only way that it will go up is if in the last um, 60 seconds someone puts a bid in of over £10, the time will increase by 15 seconds. So at the moment the car is at £4,600, it's a 2013 
A5. Uh, you can click on the pictures so you can go through, do you know, like this. Look around the car, it looks like a clean car. Nothing seems to be wrong with it. 39,000 miles. Um, it is a cat end, so at some point it has been in a previous crash, as it states there. Previous cat end repaired. Previous damage was to the front of the vehicle, starts and drives for all the purposes. Um, so, like I said, the price is going up, so the time is slowly extending itself. And all you do on here is you click on the, you know, the box that you want to, uh, you know, bid. It increases and tells you what the final bid will be. Um, and obviously you've got the red box here telling you the reserve not met. Once it goes green, the reserve's met. You do have auction fees on top of all this, just like you do uh, with the coal part. Um, so I think if you click on that, that's the bid history. So that's not what I'm after. Um, so these are your auction fees. Hammer price, I'll say £5,000. £395 hammer price, plus loading fee and a few other bits and pieces. Just to give you a rough estimate. So that's what you do basically. Like I said, you can log on to the, the exact time your car's going to sell for, um, and you know you'll never miss it. So it's not as, as rushed as Core Part is. Core Part, you'll find that 90% of the action is within the last 30 seconds as you watch the wheel go around. That's when people are going to be bidding. So if you see a car the day before auction, the prices will be very low, but they will not sell for anywhere near that because all the action happens in this 30 seconds. Whereas with Cinetech, quite often, you don't see the prices go up much. Um, people will bid during the week and that they'll just let the bids run and see if they win it. Uh, so someone's going a bit mental at the minute. It just jumps up a few hundred pound. So yeah, that's, it. that's just a quick comparison for you. I'm not going to watch it go through because the video is going to end up being really long once we've watched this ST go through. But, but that's nice. Let's watch this. Uh, see it, Liam Cooper R, 2019. It's only got 2,000 miles on the clock. Uh, let's just extend this a bit. Open the picture. Uh, very nice. 8,500 at the minute. It's a pure sale as well. It's a cat S. Bonus time. Uh, if I had a bit more money, I would have probably had a, had a dab like this. It's a bit too late pure to look through detail. Really. Uh, bonus time. The face of it. Low looks mile, like you need some front end damage. Um, no airbag damage. Pure safe. Low mile. Bonus time. It's bent chassis like just round a bit there, isn't it? But it might only be the front plate. But obviously it's pushed it back a bit, so it, it's chassis like damage. Low so mile, pure safe. It's full straight, down on 600. It's quite cheap, that. Anyway. New bidder. So yeah, there are two different auction sites that I use. There is another one, but I haven't really run anything on it yet, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. Uh, so, I will leave you with that then, and we'll come back in what will be now, 121 minutes, um, to watch the Fiesta ST go through. Um, yeah, okay. Sold on approval. Your watch item is next on the block. All right, so we um, we are up next. So after this, Alhambra has been through. Um, the 2014 Fiesta ST is on. Now, in reality, I'll be honest, I'm not all that interested in this car, mainly because Sold. of the rear arch damage, but because it's also to the side of the country. Um, but at £2,000, um, no better. Um, it is going up a bit. I'll throw a bit on just so I have. <laughs> Not that. Um, well, obviously it's been out this straight away. But you see, look, it's at it's at two forty, two seven. At two seven now, you know. It's really not really worth my time, to be honest with you. To go down to Rochford, which is a four hour drive each way. And then we've got the risk of this rear arch damage, which is what's putting me off really, to be honest, because there is some damage there. 
Bonus time. Two nine fifty. I only paid three one for the white one. With slip with half the mileage. No. Bonus time. I just I just don't see it. I just don't see it there. By the time if you've got if you've got a you know, fix that rear arch and blow in that wing. It's just sold on approval. It's just not there, I don't think. And it was on Better. approval anyway, so it didn't meet reserve. Uh, so unfortunately, we haven't won anything today, um, but we've watched a few and I've showed you the process, so I hope you all understand it a little bit better now. So, when I am looking for cars, this is pretty much what I do most days. And that, like you can see there, I've got a few. I'm going to look at on, um, what day is it, Tuesday? So that's Thursday. So um, we'll check them out on the day. I'm just trying to remember where they are. Where where are these? Sandwich. Mm. But yeah, that's got a bit of a smash in it. R32 with category S. So anyway, yeah, uh, I'll I'll finish this video here because it has got on quite a bit now. Um, I hope you've enjoyed watching the process of um, do you know these these co part auction cars and obviously the quick little look at Cinetech as well. And um, unfortunately, like I said, we haven't won anything, but. There's always next time, I'll have another look towards the end of the week. I think Chester is Friday again, so I'll have another come Friday and see if we can um, get some for the channel. So for now, thank you very much for watching. As always, please do subscribe to the channel, big thumbs up for the videos, press the bell notification to be notified of all future videos, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.